So, some of you laughed when we uh, mentioned the theme to this year's catalog, but it's something that means something very dear, it's near and dear to my heart. So when I think of next season's catalog, I think of our cabin in McCall. Now it's about two hours north of our home in Meridian, and we can't get there very often, but when we do, I love it. I love to go because it's our family's place to hugga. <laughs> Use it as a verb, it becomes very fun. <laughs> okay, now, when we go, I just can't wait to put on my gloves and chop wood, make a fire, read a book, put a puzzle together with the kids, we play dominoes, we cook big breakfasts, and we go for long walks or go cross-country skiing. At the cabin, we have everything that we need, but nothing extra. We don't have the 28 years of life stored in boxes, waiting for us to sort through and organize. The most unorganized thing at the cabin is the half-completed puzzle that beckons us to stop the other very low-stress thing that we're currently doing to sit down and finish it. When we're up there, I often think, why don't we do this at home? But then I realize it's really hard to sit down and do a puzzle when the kids haven't cleaned their room like you've asked them a dozen times, <laughs> when there's laundry to do, when there are dishes in the sink, when there's a garage to clean, and this is one of my, it's easier for us sometimes to buy a new suitcase for $15 at TJ Maxx than it is to unload the suitcase from the last Disney trip. <laughs> so every trip we have a carry-on full of memorabilia that we are unwilling or afraid to just simply throw away. Now last Thanksgiving something wonderful happened to us. The sump pump in our basement the pump that removes the sewage from the house, it quit working. So it backed up our plumbing and our basement was partially flooded. Now that was exactly what we needed to deal with the 14 years of extra stuff we had accumulated and not properly organized since we started this journey with Sensi. Before, Heidi stayed at home, so everything was perfectly organized. All of the kids Schoolwork was sorted through, only the good stuff was kept, put in files, stored in boxes. Up until 2004, our life was incredibly organized. Since 2004, it became piles and piles of things waiting for us to finally um, get through it. So, no, actually the other direction. This means going back, right? Um, so, when um, we had this flood, we had a decision to make, um, are we just going to fix it or are we going to do something more drastic? So we decided that we would remodel our house. And remodeling the house forced us to finally address the mountain of boxes and the storage and the piles of clothes that had been patiently waiting for us to gather up and take to charity. And we just needed enough energy to confront them, and this was the kick in the pants that we needed. Now, to make our project easier, we decided to do it while we still lived in the house. <laughs> so here's the plan. We were going to move everything from the upstairs to the downstairs. Then when we are on the incentive trips, perfect opportunity, we're away, the contractor would renovate the downstairs, or would clean out the downstairs, on the incentive trips that renovate the downstairs. When we returned from Europe, we would move our family to the newly remodeled basement, then would clean out the upstairs, and then they would remodel the upstairs while we were comfortably living in the basement. Now the problem was they cut the countertops wrong and they had to redo them. The tile guy got a head injury and his replacement needed a replacement who needed a replacement and the clothes dryer that they bought, you know, we only were plumbed for electric and, um, or well, for gas, and we needed an electric dryer, so we had to plumb in some new electricity. Needless to say, our life since the Mediterranean cruise has been in complete limbo. 
We've spent every spare moment sorting through a seemingly endless pile of stuff. And we still have more to do. But I'm already feeling freer and happier. Each time we sort a box or donate a bag of clothes to charity, I feel a release of a burden that I didn't realize I was carrying. We were so busy growing Sensi and our family that we didn't take the time to reflect on what is important and worth keeping. So we ended up keeping everything buried in an unorganized clutter. We waited for its day of reckoning and it was exciting to finally get to it. Not until I felt the release of that burden by organizing it did I realize the true cost to my happiness, our family's happiness, and productivity in living a cluttered life. Now, if you look through history, eh, here's a normal talk, so you get a little history lesson. If you look, look through history, you can observe that societies have similar challenges. They grow ever more complex, often over centuries, only to go through a period of dramatic simplification in just a couple of decades. Examples include Egypt and Rome, the Mayan in the Yucatan, or the Mughals of India that left us the Taj Mahal. Complexity grows over centuries. Simplification happens in decades. Why is this the case? Because societies, now these could be any societies. They could be the Sensi organization as a whole, all of us together. It could be your independent Sensi business. Um, or even your personal households. They increase in complexity to address the problems insufficiently answered by simpler systems. We add complexity when our simple system doesn't work anymore. But it only happens if there's enough energy to support the new complexity. So basically, diversity of opinion creates conflict. And that needs to be uh, managed. I mean, you experience this in your family discussions over what restaurant to go to. We do for sure. Or you see this complexity needed when diversity of opinion shows up on Facebook pages. And every social interaction in between. Now, the more participants in any society, the greater the diversity of opinion and the greater the need for complex answers to questions. Now, it was easy for us to plan an incentive trip when Kristen Glauser and A.D. Mitchell were the only ones to earn it. <laughs> we even changed the destination and we customized the trip just for them. They were able to call us on our landline Hey, we don't really like cruises. What if we spent the money and rented a house? How about we do it on the North Shore of Hawaii? We found one on vacation rentals by owner. <laughs> okay, same money, no problem for us. So we rented a house. We stopped by Costco to load the car with supplies. And we planned the entire week as we went. Now, with 110,000 potential earners from 11 different countries who speak four different languages, it's more difficult. Diversity makes Sensi better, for sure, but it requires us to stretch. And we need more complex systems to plan and orchestrate a great event like this. To give a very graphic example with which you can all relate, where you go to the bathroom is not a problem in a sparsely populated area. The Bushmen of the Kalahari don't worry that much about it. But when you put 10,000 people in a couple square miles along the Thames River, back in the old days of London, you have a problem. And you have to address it with infrastructure and rules and processes. And that new complexity requires energy. Now, we all get our energy from the sun. Ultimately, that's where all of our energy comes from. And if it's food energy that we're talking about, the sun turns, the farms turn sun energy into food energy. And farms must not only produce 
and convert that sun energy to produce enough food to feed their families, they have to produce enough to feed the person who makes the rules and the person who builds the sewer. Then there must be enough extra food and energy to uh, feed the bureaucrats that implement the rules and manage the rules and all the conflicts that are coming about, who gets to use the sewer when, and the maintenance crew to keep the sewer functioning. The functioning sewer allows more density, which in turn requires more complexity. Now, this complexity grows as long as there is enough energy to not only build the new infrastructure, but to maintain it. Electrical grids, fiber optic networks, cell phone networks, even Wi-Fi networks are examples of how our society has decided to spend extra energy to make life more productive. But each system requires uh, or creates efficiencies, but it also creates complexity in our lives that we have to manage forever. Now, urbanization that I just kind of talked about is just one example, but since he provides its own example. When you sign up as a brand new consultant, or when you sign up a brand new consultant, her decision to join brings with it a massive amount of energy fueled by her enthusiasm. And then her family and friends feed that enthusiasm as they fill their homes with Sensi for the first time. But as the energy provided by her launch subsides, you must help her find new sources of energy to fuel her. Or she will run out of energy and fade away. And I loved the conversation in the panel ahead about how to help team members find that energy. Now this happens repeatedly. And it is why so many people don't make it as entrepreneurs. They can't get past the launch energy. But this isn't something to be feared. This is human nature that we just have to understand. But it should be understood so that you have a better chance of helping people stay energized and continually growing. I mean, let's see if this helps you understand what I'm talking about. When you are a new consultant, your system for follow-up might be sufficiently organized in your head. But after a while, when your customer base has grown, it is impossible to remember all your customers' names, what their preferred products are, when they might need refills, or when in the future they have indicated that they might be interested in hosting a party. So you look for a system to help you. It might require paper cards and spreadsheets and calendars or even the Maven app, hint, hint, <laughs> that we launched a few months ago. And as long as you have enough energy to put into that system and to put it into place, you are willing to increase the complexity of your business to better service more customers more efficiently. And now you have a follow-up system, but you have to manage it. Now, usually your business is growing in complexity as your family grows in complexity. I mean, our parents' health seems to fail right when our kids need us most. Add a business to this, and it's enough to really stretch us. But please understand, I'm not saying that complexity is a bad thing. It is essential if we want to live a meaningful life. I've said before, a life of significance is made up of days of frustration. And we can live a carefree life, but that will end up being meaningless in the end. Our life will ultimately be measured by our willingness and ability to squeeze more out of our time, talents, and blessings in the service of others. That squeezing requires the willing acceptance of complexity. What I am saying is that when you take on new challenges in life or you stretch into a better version of yourself, you need to take advantage of the work of others to lower the energy required to face those challenges so that you can stretch without breaking that you can grow without burning out. This is what is meant when people say that successful people stand on the shoulders of giants. Companies can fall into a trap of adding program after program, trying to satisfy every whim of each customer segment 
or business unit. And this problem turns tragic at Sensi when consultants feel the need to reinvent every process, customize every marketing post, improve every training, question every policy, and enhance every event. If there is energy to grow and maintain the complexity, all is well. But as soon as the energy in the form of customer enthusiasm drops to levels insufficient to maintain the complexity, the business is forced to simplify. To better illustrate the concept of energy, let me let you into a little secret. Most of the time that Heidi and I, most of the time that we're in the office, we spend it in the little conference room outside of our offices in meetings. Now, we'll be there for six or seven hours working with one group after another that comes through, working through the details of projects that are being completed or worked on. And we make big decisions in these meetings. Often, if you're in the superstar director group, I'll text in a meeting, NDA, need your help. We're stuck in that conference room and I need your help. But when we're making those big decisions, my brain needs sugar. And there is a bowl of candy, some Swedish fish, some M&Ms, a big bowl of Hershey nuggets. The ones with almonds are my favorite. If it's got a red stripe on it, it's dark chocolate, I'll spit it out. <laughs> but when that bowl is sitting right in front of me, I can subconsciously eat handfuls of candy, one right after the other. Now, I know that I don't have the willpower to stop. And I know that there is science behind me backing it up, that I don't have the willpower to stop. So when I don't want to eat that candy, when I put on a couple pounds and I've got to watch what I eat, I can't just say, have more willpower, Orville. I go put the bowl out on Amber's desk. Now, if I need brain food, and I'm known to do this, I will leave the meeting, excuse myself, go grab a handful of M&Ms, and come back into the meeting. Now, I know I can always eat the candy that I need to feed my brain. Because the bowl is further away, though, it takes more energy for me to get it, and I end up eating less. Honestly, I've had to put it in the kitchen, in the cupboard, 10 steps further away to keep me from eating too much sometimes. And I'll bring the bowl into the meeting and everybody knows, oh no, Orville and Heidi have had enough. But now imagine if the goal wasn't to eat less candy, it was to eat more candy. What would you do? You'd do the opposite. You would make sure that you would always have a bowl full of M&Ms right about here. So the very little amount of energy is necessary to feed your uh, brain. Now, over the last few years, Heidi and I have had lots of conversations in these meetings, out of these meetings. Our pillow talk is about how our work at the home office affects all of you and your teams. And this year, Heidi's laughing, telling our kids, yeah, that is our pillow talk. So... Or is Jace, Grace just asking, Mom, what's pillow talk? <laughs> Grace is 15 for one more week. Now, this year, we're committed to bringing the candy dish closer to you, to lower the energy required for you to run a business that will be successful. There are lots of things that we can do. This year, we are paying more attention to what we should do. And right now, I'm inviting you to do the same. Instead of chasing everything you can do, focus on what you should do. Now, let's take a look at the last few months, including the last couple of days, to illustrate what I mean. One of the biggest steps you take as a consultant is when you decide to invest some of your energy in helping others join Sensi2. Almost every conversation we have with consultants demonstrates either their love for their leader or their enthusiasm for a team member. 
some of the hardest and saddest conversations are of leaders who have seen their teams shrink. It can suck the energy right out of you if you let it. And that's why sponsoring is such a frequent topic in training. Because this is a volunteer sales force. There will always be people coming in and out. And that should be expected. Bringing on more team members is always better when you can keep the ones you already have. But often, people who join have conflicting priorities that require them to step away from Cincy for a season. And that's okay. But last month, we rolled out a new feature called Workstation Lite. This gives all former consultants access to a version of their workstation so they can reinstate without having to call you. Hey, I'd like to come back. What do I do? Uh, call consultant support. Okay. Consultant support, what do I do? Okay, we're going to send you some information. Hey, I called them. They're sending me some information. Hey, did you reinstate yet? Ah, uh, no. It was too tough. Right? That's what extra energy will ha cause happen. All we did was lower the energy required for a, a consultant to re-sign up. And as the results have shown, it's nothing short of amazing. In less than a month, over 7,000 consultants rejoined. <laughs> Yesterday, there were 500 consultants rejoined, just yesterday. No policy was changed. No incentive was given. No money was spent. All we did was lower the energy required for people to do what they obviously wanted to do. And in 30 days, since he grew its consultant base 7% in one month. Now, being able to keep your team members is only half the challenge. Keeping your customers is important too, am I right? One of the most important practices for the success of your business is following up with customers so they know and trust you as their consultant. Now, you might be shocked to know that 70%, 70 percent, seven zero of Sensi customers never purchase anything from Sensi after their initial order. Why do you think this is? Do you really think 70 percent of our customers are dissatisfied with their purchase? There's no way we'd be growing if that's the case. Lack of follow-up is the main reason people don't repurchase. So, we at the home office put an emphasis on second purchase last year and set out to help you find ways to follow up better. Since he sells about 400 million PRV each year, if half of those who once purchased, or purchased once, purchased just one more time, that would increase sales roughly 120 million PRV. If half of them, Purchased one more time. Since he would grow 30% year over year, which is massive growth for a company our size, if we could get only half of the customers or only by once to purchase just one more time. Do you see the power of simply following up? Better follow up is the key to getting that second purchase. And a low energy, easy to use follow up system is essential to creating a culture of follow-up in your teams. For over a year, our marketing technology team has taken lead on a program to bring the Maven app to you. The clappers are the ones that are using it. If you're not clapping, potentially, you might want to know what they know. It makes it easier for you to follow up with your customers by giving you prompts to complete simple tasks in customer follow-up, product sharing, and recording activities, like when you pass out a sample. It helps you save energy in developing a presence on Instagram, 
categorizing your contacts and strengthening relationships so important for a successful business. Now, since launch, over 13,000 consultants have downloaded the app. They've sent over 368,000 messages to contacts, and they've completed 332,821 sales generating tasks. <laughs> Maven lowers the energy required to maintain a complex system that is necessary to follow up. Now, we are working with Maven to bring its capabilities to consultants in Region 2, Region 3, and Mexico. We partnered with them because it was the least energy uh, or, or the lowest energy spend rather than developing it ourselves. They're a great company, but we have to bring them along to our global scale. But we're doing that. And follow-up will definitely help you sell more, which in turn will help your team grow. Now, I'm very excited to see the impact of lowering the energy of follow-up over the months and years to come. But growth can come in lots of forms when we lower the energy that it takes to grow. One way to grow your business is by exposing your customers to more products that Sensi offers. They may love their warmer and wax, but have no idea there are other great products that they would love as much or more. I mean, seriously, if you had to give up warmers and wax or Sensi laundry, what would you choose? I mean, that would be a really difficult choice for me. I mean, I have forgotten to put washer whiffs in a load of laundry, and I had to rewash it. <laughs> washer whiffs are as much a part of my life as my cell phone, toothpaste, and my car. I can't imagine life without it. Now, think of it this way. An average household may be, what, able to hold six warmers in their home? Now, I know, I know. <laughs> there are some of you who have six in each room, but I'm talking average household. <laughs> but on average, you're going to sell six warmers to a household, but that same household can use 12 tubs of washer whiffs in a year. We should be able to sell at least as many tubs of washer whiffs as warmers. If we did, that would increase sales nearly 40 million PRV. That's just, that's 10% growth just from getting people to use washer whiffs. And you know they're going to love them if you've used them, right? The same could be said for our other laundry, our wax, our oils, our scent pods, body and clean products. The magic of Scentsy is the consumable nature of our products. And Scentsy makes things people buy every day better. The problem is it takes a lot of energy and follow-up to convince someone to try Scentsy products in place of products that they're used to buying. The Whiff Box lowers the energy you need to introduce... the full range of Scentsy products to your customers. Now, because we do the work of making the Whiff Box attractive, on-trend, and meaningful, all you have to do is introduce the concept to your customers. In marketing, this is called increasing the share of wallet. Once you have a customer who knows and trusts you, the easiest way for you to grow your sales is to find additional products for that customer to enjoy that they can get from you. By providing a whiff box, we make it easier for you to increase the share of wallet among your customers, which allows you to use that freed up energy to focus on finding new customers or growing your team. Now, growth is good, but there is good growth, better growth, and best growth. Another business term you'll often hear is the cost of customer acquisition. In other words, how much energy must you put into getting someone to buy something from you? Getting someone to choose you instead of someone else takes energy. 
Now, how much energy do you think it takes to get someone to purchase from you again? If you provide great product and great customer service, it will be far less difficult to get repeat business. Statistics show that it is seven times easier to get someone to purchase from you than to get a new customer, or to repurchase from you than to get a new customer. Now, do you realize that Facebook, Amazon, and Netflix, they all became multi-billion dollar businesses, and their founders became the richest of the rich before any of those companies made any money? How? These businesses focused on building subscribers. You see, a sale is good, repeat sales are better, but recurring sales from subscribers are best. Once you have a committed subscriber, the energy for them to purchase products from you is so low, purchasing from you becomes part of who they are. Think of your subscriptions, your cell phone, your Netflix account, your phone and cable bill, if you're older. Phone bills are like what you pay for to have a landline. <laughs> we still got one, over 45. <laughs> These products or, uh, or services have simply become part of your life, and you rarely think about the purchase. Now, obviously, not every Sensi customer will want that level of commitment. But there are thousands who do. Sensi Club is designed to help you find and keep your best customers by lowering the energy required for them to get what they love. With Sensi Club, we can begin to shift one time spontaneous sales into long term customer relationships. Growth because we sell 50,000 Stella the Unicorns is good. Growth because 50,000 people are getting their laundry, body, clean products from us every month is best. Now, offering wax in a subscription in Cincy Club was essential to get your customers to pay attention. Adding the always get my bar feature will make it impossible not to pay attention, right? Now, one of the biggest challenges we have is the need to constantly improve and stay on trend with products, but then we have to discontinue products people incorporate into their identity. Every time we discontinue a fragrance, there's real anxiety because each fragrance regardless of its overall popularity, has become more than appreciated. It has become part of somebody. Up until now, our only option was to offer the Bring Back My Bar program. But we knew Bring Back My Bar was not fulfilling that demand. Yet what could we do? Offer 600 fragrances? Or stop adding new ones? Neither are acceptable options. So our team took on this challenge. And because of the incredible efficiencies of our warehouses, manufacturing, and shipping teams, which I must say are the best in the world, <laughs> side note here, we get efficiency experts coming in saying, I'm an expert. I can help you save money by improving your processes. Let me take a look. They come in and take a look, and they say, ah, never mind. Now, because of these processes, because of the great work at the home office, we can make hundreds of fragrances in small batches using the equipment we used to use back in 2007 and 2008, but we can only do it for our most loyal and committed customers. So in the future, the Bring Back My Bra program will not only bring retired fragrances back from the vault, it will also turn those fragrances on so they can be added to the Scentsy Club subscriptions. Imagine that energy and the opportunities you're going to have to talk to old customers. Now, this program will do one thing. It will provide recurring revenue that you can count on every month. Imagine this. 
When your newest consultants are brimming with energy, fueled by the excitement of starting their own Sensi business, what if you were able to help them find just five customers to purchase a Whiff box and two of their favorite Sensi bars per month? That consultant would never again worry about being active. The energy needed to keep those customers happy would be so little compared to finding five new customers every single month. Can you see the power of this program? Now, we hope so because we see this as a game changer for all of you. But speaking of game changer, what has been the reaction to the announcement of our new Disney collection? What do you think? Are your teams back home excited? Have we sufficiently created FOMO for next year? It's one of our goals, you know. Okay, now we have seen this with other licensed products like uh, we've offered in Region 1, like the NCAA or Major League Baseball warmers, but nothing compares to the power of a Disney, Disney licensed partnership because it simply lowers the energy required to get customers interested in the products you sell. <laughs> Think about this for a moment. Uh, you probably thought about it, but just let this sink in. When has an average person been able to earn money selling not only Disney products, but Disney toys with no more required of them than to commit to an independent consultant agreement and purchase a starter kit for less than the cost of dinner and a movie with their family? Heck, with the earn -a kit option that's now available, they can join with no money out of pocket at all. They just have to commit to hosting a good party. Now, because of the marketing power of the companies with which we have licensing agreements, particularly Disney, your customers are predisposed to want what you sell. So, you're more likely to offer products for them to buy. It works like this. When I was younger, I was more likely to ask a girl out if I knew she already wanted to go on a date with me, <laughs> right? You're more likely to offer a product to a customer if you already believe she wants what you have. So Disney doesn't make that easy. Again, this is lowering the energy needed to acquire new happy customers. Now, many of you have had a chance to meet my wonderful parents, Leon and Elaine Thompson. I could not be more proud to be their son. I'm going to face this way because I might be looking at you in the, in the screen then. Um, couldn't be more happy to be their son. Now, you may also know that Chuck Thompson's my brother and Susan Averett is my sister. Both of them work at Sensi. Now, in many ways, the three of us are very, very different. But in other ways, we are strikingly, uh, strikingly similar. Our religious and our political views overlap at least 95%. All three of us have five children. Not planned that way, it just happened. We have all had bariatric surgery. That's probably genetics. We all live in relatively similar houses and our family traditions are very similar. Now I've concluded that it was because of the consistency of our parents. Now we grew up going to church. We didn't just belong, we went. Every service, every program, every teaching, our family consumed it all. Mom and dad lowered the energy it took to raise us kids by following a program that had proven success and that they trusted. Because of their faith, they molded their family practices to the tenets of that faith. They allowed the programs of our church to guide them in raising us. As a result, we were all socialized very similarly and, in my opinion, a very healthy and productive way. Now, I don't bring this up to proselytize my faith in any way. 
I bring it up to demonstrate the efficiency of following a program that you trust. Since he has evolved over the last 14 years, learning from our successes, mistakes, and failures, and your successes, mistakes, and failures, hundreds of thousands of personalities have had an input into our culture that I submit to you is as good as can be found in the world today. and programs that have blessed millions of lives. The system that has emerged, sensiness, it works. And it works best when we trust it and we teach our teams to trust it. So let me get to the point. Every year we offer an incentive trip. It is a huge factor in the success for thousands of consultants because it organizes your work. Knowing how to be successful is hard. Knowing how to reach for the beach or wherever we're going next year in one of our incentive trips is simple. There is a program outlined for you to follow. Now I hear so often, I worked really hard because we were going to the Mediterranean or Hawaii or Disney World because I always wanted to go. Alternatively, I hear, I didn't really try because I didn't care to go to that destination. After an incentive trip, we hear this all the time. I wasn't very excited to come, but you have won me over. I'll never miss another one. The point is this. Earning an incentive trip is a powerful way to move your business forward. The value of an incentive trip isn't in its ability to focus on the, or the value of an incentive trip is its ability to focus you on the program of earning it. The destination is just the packaging. You will see incredible growth if you can understand this point. If you learn to love the programs and get your teams to buy in wholeheartedly. Long-term successful consultants earn the trip because it is a sensey program, not because of where we are going. If you want to know how best to build your business, look at the incentive trip that we're currently offering. We don't do these because we want to go on vacation. We do them because we want to lower the energy needed for you to know what to do to be successful. So commit to doing whatever it takes to go and you will find success as a byproduct. Now we have talked about how the size of your teams matters in growing your business and how the workstation light and auto reinstate feature lowers the energy needed to reignite former consultants. We have talked about how following up with your customers is critical and how the Maven app lowers the energy it takes to stay on top of your consultant's mind or your customer's mind so you can be there for them when they need you. We talked about how increasing share of wallet is a low energy way of increasing sales and how the WIF box lowers the energy it takes to introduce these products to your customers. We talked about the value of stable, predictable, recurring revenue and how Sensi Club lowers the energy that is required for you to service customers who already know and love Sensi products. We talked about the power of the Disney license and how it can lower the energy needed for you and your teams to find new customers and get existing customers interested in purchasing more and hopefully joining your team. And we talked about incentive trips as a powerful way of lowering energy required in setting appropriate goals. Because in the process of earning a trip, you are doing all of the vital behaviors necessary to build a healthy business. Now these are six seriously powerful horses to pull your business faster and farther. Now they aren't the only things that we are doing at the home office. They are just six examples of how we are organizing our work to help you work smarter, not harder, to use an off-use cliche. So you can find greater effectiveness while lowering the energy necessary to be successful. So trust them and use them. And as you do, you will need less energy to be a successful Sensi consultant. 
I emphasize lowering the energy required to run your business because when I see you working harder, not smarter, I know it will only be a matter of time before you start to feel stretched too thin and feel overwhelmed. The extra burden of carrying too much complexity is unnecessary. Returning to the core value of simplicity embodied in our catalog theme, Huga, and demonstrated in the efforts of your home office team can only make you happier. When you clean up your business by eliminating unnecessary, complicated, overly customized, unproductive, and expensive practices, you'll feel the same release of burden that I felt when we finally addressed the boxes of clutter sprinkled with potential question, or treasures that haunted us for years. Now, I have said many times that you should never spend family money on Sensi. You should earn Sensi money on your family. Similarly, you should gain energy from your business so that you have more energy for your family, your friends, and your personal goals. Our hope is that you will always have enough energy, enough time, enough love that you can find your bench and dream of all the ways you will become the true star that you are meant to be. Be a star big enough that others can wish upon you. When you are somebody that makes others' wishes come true, you become a star. And the more you help others, the bigger the star you are. Thank you. Love you. Love you too.